Good evening, folks. Welcome to this evening's webinar. My name is Simon Coulson from Mozzieworks Publications and Business Opportunity Review. And this evening, I'm joined by James Carhill, who is going to talk to us about investing in the great new investment hotspot of Costa Rica. So, uh, James, are you there? Hi, Simon. Yes, I'm here and ready to go. Fantastic. Right, so over to you. Great. Well, thank you very much, Simon, and, and thank you very much for organizing this webinar for us this evening. Um, so, uh, Welcome everybody to our webinar. I think uh, most of the people on tonight are located in Europe, so uh, good evening to most of you, but for anybody who's in the States, uh, good morning if you're on the Pacific Coast and good afternoon if you're on the Eastern Seaboard. Now we do hold regular webinars and uh, at any time you can always go to our uh, website which is www.costaricainvest.ie and on the front page you can always find uh, details of our upcoming webinars. Uh, we also do record uh, the webinars as we present them and the recordings are always in this area here which is the free downloads and media area. Those are our contact details there. Now for those of you who are new to the webinar format, uh, I'll be doing the talking, but there is a little box on the right hand side of your screen, a little control panel, and we will have uh, hopefully a few minutes for a Q&A at the end of uh, the webinar this evening. And so if any questions pop into mind in the course of the webinar, uh, just type them into that uh, little, little question and answer box there. We won't be able to answer them straight away, but we'll get to as many of them as we can at the end of the webinar. Now, first of all, a little bit about me. My name is James Cahill, and my company is Costa Rica Invest. Uh, we're an international sales and marketing company, and we have for the past five years specialized in selling Costa Rican investments. We now have consultants working in Canada, the USA, United Kingdom, Costa Rica, Ireland, United Arab Emirates, and Spain. And uh, primarily, we focus on ecological hybrid investments and development opportunities. The companies that we choose to work with have a very high level of success and we're sticklers for detail and we always do a really thorough due diligence before we agree to work with or represent any company. We only look at uh, opportunities in Costa Rica which have high potential yields for our clients and we always look at ones that have an ecological aspect to them. And in those ecological uh, investments we tend to combine them with development land giving a, a, a hybrid or dual investment opportunity. So today um, I'm I'm aware that many of the people on the call are perhaps not that familiar with Costa Rica. So I thought I'd just give a quick background on Costa Rica before I introduce the, the opportunities themselves. So first of all, is Costa Rica a good uh, investment opportunity? Well, let's talk a little bit about Costa Rica. Let's talk a little bit about the economy of Costa Rica. And let's talk a little bit about real estate in Costa Rica. So first of all, Costa Rica, where is it? Well, it's in Central America. It's the oldest democracy in Central and Southern America. With more teachers than policemen, uh, it has no army, and it's often referred to as the Switzerland of Latin America. It's a literacy rate of 96%, and this year they're going to spend more than 25% of their entire national budget on education. Costa Rica has a fantastic climate, and people in Costa Rica live longer than most other places in the Western Hemisphere, and have a long, an average longevity of 79 years of age. Costa Rica is located at the intersection of two very large continents, North America and South America, and it contains over 5% of the world's biodiversity. That's an incredible figure when you think about it. One in 20 of every living thing on this planet lives in a little country in Central America, and that country is called Costa Rica. Costa Rica also ranks very highly in a number of pools. They're practically the country that invented ecotourism. Three years ago, they were ranked fifth in the world in terms of environmental performance. Two years ago, they were ranked third in the world in terms of environmental performance. And we're due to see the results of that study coming out again this year. And they intend to be number one. That's their aim, to be number one in the world in terms of environmental performance. Costa Rica is the seventh most socially and politically stable country in the world. That's according to the Economist Intelligence Unit. That's an incredible figure when you think about it, that the seventh most socially and politically stable country in the world is located in Central America. Most people simply don't believe it, but it's true, and that country is Costa Rica. By comparison, the UK ranks number 35 in the same study, and the US ranks number 56. Costa Rica is ranked number one in the Happy Planet Index. 
And this compares the ecological footprint of a nation to its happiness. This is a new way of looking at the economic success of a country. And this study is carried out by the New Economics Foundation. Costa Rica basically has a very happy population and they do very little damage to the environment in pursuit of that happiness. Costa Rica is the most prosperous country in Latin America and that study is carried out every year by the Legatum Prosperity Index. Now Costa Rica has preserved more than 25% of its land area as natural park and forest reserve never to be developed and it plans to be carbon neutral as a nation by 2021. More than 95% of their energy requirements come from renewable resources. 20 years ago, they invested hugely in hydroelectric, wind and geothermal power. At the time when they were carrying out that investment, other countries thought they were crazy. Oil was cheap and these technologies were really, really expensive. Now, 20 years later, Costa Rica produces 95% of its energy from these renewable resources, wind, water and geothermal power and other countries look to Costa Rica and the inspired decisions that they made 20 years ago. So Costa Rica is a small country, but it's got very big goals. And as I mentioned, they plan to be carbon neutral by 2021. And they're going to achieve that through a number of channels, including the planting of more trees. Last year, they planted more than 7 million trees. That's more per head of population than anywhere else in the world. But to achieve their carbon neutrality, they're going to need to have to plant more trees and preserve more land. And that's going to add to the value of existing development land. Costa Rica is a very attractive tourist destination and the tourism industry is worth over two billion dollars a year to Costa Rica and they intend to concentrate on growing that further and particularly to concentrate on ecotourism. And tourism in Costa Rica is booming. It's becoming more and more popular amongst Europeans but it is super popular amongst Americans and Canadians. Every celeb in America has their second home in Costa Rica. But Costa Rica is not interested in just a one-off visitor. They want people to come again and again and prefer to own a home in Costa Rica. And to do this, they've made the process of emigrating to Costa Rica very, very straightforward. And you and I have the same land and property ownership rights as a Costa Rican citizen, and that's enshrined in the Constitution. You and I can buy and sell property in Costa Rica without restriction, and this makes Costa Rica very, very different to many of its neighbours. In most other countries, in Central and Southern America, you require complex structures like local partners and company setups uh, to, to, uh, to own land and effectively in the end of the day you don't really own it. And so the exodus has already begun and more than 1% of the population of Costa Rica is already North American expatriates and retirees and more and more are flocking southward daily. Now why are they coming to Costa Rica? Well they're looking for a lower cost of living a stable political environment, access to great health care and a fantastic climate. The cost of living in Costa Rica is about 50% of the cost of living in, in, uh, in the USA and health care is a fraction of the price. In fact, so much so that medical tourism is now a booming business in Costa Rica. So you can imagine, living in a beautiful climate in a safe place with great health care for a fraction of your current cost of living? Well, it's no surprise that so many Americans and Canadians are flocking to Costa Rica. But Costa Rica is not just a pretty place to sit on the beach. Costa Rica has also diversified its economy and now generates a large portion of its revenue through high-tech medical and other manufacturing industries. Companies like Microsoft, Dell, Hewlett Packard, Intel, Johnson & Johnson all have their central and southern American headquarters in Costa Rica. And why are they located in and locating in Costa Rica? Well again, it's a combination of political stability, lucrative tax breaks, highly educated workforce and low labor costs. These companies have direct investment in Costa Rica totaling billions of dollars. But the taxation benefits don't just apply to multinationals. Costa Rica is a personal tax haven. And with planning you can achieve a very very low or even no tax situation for yourself. So to sum it up, Costa Rica is very business friendly, it has huge eco aspirations, it's stable, it's safe and it's got excellent health care. How's the economy in Costa Rica doing? Well, at the beginning of last year, the IMF issued a report on Costa Rica and they said that the economic recovery in Costa Rica is firmly underway, that economic growth rose in the second half of 2009 and remained strong in the first quarter of 2010, and that a supportive fiscal policy was a boost to recovery and inflation had moved to low levels. So that was a very positive report uh, at the beginning of 2009. 
And was the IMF right about Costa Rica? Well, yes, they were. Their exports were up last year by 16.8%, and in fact, the economy grew overall by 4.5% and is expected to grow by 5% this year. Let's talk a little bit about real estate in Costa Rica. There are two very large drivers that are going to affect land prices in the short to medium term in Costa Rica. The first of which is baby boomer retirees. Over 100 million baby boomers are going to retire over the next decade. Some estimates suggest that up to 20% would seek to either retire abroad or spend a significant amount of time abroad. And what are they going to be looking for? Well, they're going to look for safety, good climate, quality health care, and a lower cost of living. Now, Costa Rica ticks all of those boxes. But, of course, Costa Rica couldn't, couldn't possibly take 20 million retirees. It only has a population of 4 million. But a significant number of those will look to Costa Rica to retire and have a second long-term home. And these boomers, as a demographic, are armed with more money than at any time in the history of the world. The spike in demand is certainly going to push up property prices. Now, the second big driver for land price growth in Costa Rica is their eco-plans. Do you remember that I mentioned that they plan to be carbon neutral as a nation by 2021? And the fact that more than 25% of the surface area is already zoned as natural park and forest reserve. Well, the aspiration to be carbon neutral means that they need to plant more trees. And that means they've got to preserve more land. And that is going to reduce the amount of uh, available development land and is going to put upward price pressure on existing development land. This process has already started. If you do a simple Google search, you can see lots of news about how Costa Rica has, has gathered together funding to preserve a further 1% of its surface area, increasing it from 25 to 26%. And that process is going to continue. So there's going to be less and less available land to develop in Costa Rica. And at the same time, a large influx of people armed with more money to spend than at any time in history, and all of them wanting to be part of the Costa Rican dream. So is Costa Rica, as a country, a good investment opportunity? Well, I certainly think so, but of course, uh, you can make that decision yourself. Let's move on now and actually talk about some specific opportunity. I know many of you are very interested in biofuels, so that's the first opportunity I'm going to introduce to you. We've reached peak oil. And basically, our carboniferous oil supply is now in terminal decline. We are basically running out of oil. The oil wells are going dry. We need a new supply of fuel. And in fact, biofuels is something that we've known about for hundreds of years. Well, over 100 years anyway. As you can see, uh, Goldman Sachs are predicting that this year, oil prices are going to rise to a $100 barrel. Well, we're already there. We've, we're, we're above that. And that... Um, uh, within the next decade, it's going to hit $350 a barrel. Now, as I mentioned, we've known about biofuels for quite a while. This is a picture of Rudolf Diesel. He invented the first diesel engine in 1893. And in fact, that first diesel engine was designed to run on peanut oil. And at the time, uh, or in 1920, some years later, he's quoted as saying that the use of vegetable oils for engine fuels may seem insignificant today, but such oils may become in the course of time, as important as petroleum and coal tar products are at the present time. That's what Rudolf Diesel said in 1920, and he's absolutely right. Here we are 100 years later, and his words are now coming to pass. We have come full circle. Now, one of the best biofuels uh, available is Jotropha oil. And this has been extensively tested by Air New Zealand, Virgin, Lufthansa, and many, many more. In fact, from next year, any plane flying into EU airspace without a biofuel blend will be taxed or penalized an extra landing charge. And this is where the opportunity lies in biofuels. More than 120 countries worldwide have now mandated biofuel blends. In fact, in Costa Rica, it's also mandated. And they, they have mandated a 10% blend of biofuels by next year, 2012. So countries have to buy whatever biofuel is being produced, and airlines are being forced to buy it and mix it in with their fuel as well. But the demand currently exceeds supply. Typically, previously, only the very largest investors could in invest in biofuel plantations. You had to put in millions and millions of pounds or dollars, buy your own biofuel plantation, plant your own biofuels, and uh, uh, basically start from scratch. 
But United Biofuels of America have now created a secure biofuel investment for smaller, invest for smaller investors. And it's called their Renewable Energy Farms. These are titled income producing properties in Costa Rica with a 38% ret annual return on investment. And this is part of the solution to filling that demand gap that exists at the moment. Who are UBA? Well, the United Biofuels of America. Um, they were selected earlier this year by Shell Oil as one of the top 25 global energy entrepreneurs in the world. And they run the world's largest Jatropha conference, which is called the Jatropha Harvest Experience. Here are just some of their partners. Shell, Recope, International Energy Advisors, Day Group, Costa Rica Invest, that's us, Costa Rica News, many, many more. And here's just a little detail on that Jatropha Harvest Experience that they carry out every, every year, and in fact, twice this year. So what is this opportunity that they've created? Okay, so what they were looking for is to develop a solution for micro-investors and provide an opportunity to meet this national biofuel program demand. This is the gap in demand that, that, that United Biofuels of America have identified. So what they wanted to create was a low entry level investment, but they wanted it backed up by titled real estate security. They wanted that real estate to have exceptional appreciation potential, and they required it that the biofuel income must pay for the investment within 10 years. They were looking to achieve a combined return of investment of over 300% over a 10-year term. And this is what they've created. They've identified an area in the southern zone of Costa Rica, which is ideal for, for planting and growing Jatropha and Macauba. But better than that, the land is I located ideally for significant land appreciation. Why? Because the Costa Rican government has committed to improving access to this area. This is one of the most beautiful areas in Costa Rica, but right now it's pretty inaccessible. It takes a long time to drive there, and there is no international airport. But they now have an international airport under development, and you can see it there, Palmasur Airport, and you can see the location of the renewable energy farm. It's about 45 minutes away. Now, we have history on this. We know that when an international airport is developed in Costa Rica, that land prices appreciate significantly in the environs of that because simply more people come to the area, it's more accessible, and that, it, that drives land price growth. How do we know this? Well, previously, Costa Rica only had one international airport. That was in San Jose. They opened a second called Liberia International Airport, and land prices quadrupled in, in two years around Liberia International Airport. Now, we're not focusing or, or we're not projecting any type of increase like that. We're much more conservative than that. But that's actually what happened around Liberia. This land, um, uh, like I say, is located only about 45 minutes from this new airport. And investors own both the land and the Jatropha and Macauba, which produce the biofuels. This intercropping with Macauba, which is a, is a palm uh, which is natural to Costa Rica, doubles the biofuel yield from year five onwards. Jatropha will produce from the first year. Macauba will not produce for five years, and then it doubles the yield from year five onwards. The Macauba will continue to produce for 25 years, and the Jatropha will continue to produce for up to 50 years. Investors own both the land and the Jatropha and the Macauba. The land will be fully serviced with road, water, and electricity access and suitable for development. So you have a triple investment in biofuels, development land, and you have significant ecological advantages. And remember, you own the land. Let's have a look at the returns. So, as you can see, on the left-hand side, you can see the returns from the biofuel. A $35,000 investment will buy 5,000 square meters, which is one point. Um, uh, almost 1.3, well, 1.23 acres, so slightly over an acre, an acre and a fifth, acre and a quarter almost. And uh, that $35,000 investment, year one, the returns are low because, of course, the Jatropha is planted, the Macauba isn't producing, the Jatropha has a low return. But as you can see, it builds up quite quickly. And these projections are based on today's biofuel prices. We have assumed no increase in biofuel prices over this 10-year projection. Of course, if biofuel prices increase, your returns increase.
As you can see, this is a projected return, and this is conservative of, of fifty thousand or almost fifty thousand dollars over a ten year period. So basically, you've invested thirty five thousand dollars. The biofuels alone have returned you fifty thousand. Now, what about the land prices? Where are they going to go? Well, we do know in Costa Rica that what that land uh, service land in this area is currently of, of this size is currently selling for in excess of seventy thousand dollars. So once the once the uh, infrastructure is in, we're expecting this land to reach that price level. So that's why we're starting our pricing at seventy thousand. Now we've assumed a seven point five percent per annum increase in prices for the first four years, and thereafter with the opening of that international airport 10% per year. That would give you 154,000 in terms of land increase over that 10 year period. Quite strong price, price growth, but this, this land price is starting from a very low level. Now we factored in nothing for the ecological advantages, nothing at all. Uh, I'll just go back one step there. Uh, there are significant ecological advantages to, to be had as well. Carbon credits, reforestation credits, and we have, we have valued those at zero in this. So this is a combination investment in land, development land, plus biofuels in an up-and-coming area of Costa Rica. This, of course, is the elephant in the room with many other Jotropha or biofuel investments. You don't own the land. In this case, you do own the land, and that's vital. That gives you exceptional security. In most other investments in uh, Jotropha and biofuels, you simply have a lease on the land. Now, these, by definition, are long-term investments. In the best possible scenario, you get a decent, uh, with, an, uh, with a other Jotropha investments, you get a decent return over your 10 or your 20-year period, but ultimately, at the end of it, the land reverts to the original owner, and you see nothing of the benefit of the increase in price of the land. The other alternative, of course, is that if something goes wrong with the, with the promoting company in, during the period of ownership, you effectively are left owning Jotropha plants or, or biofuel producing plants on land you don't own. And that's never a good situation. In this case, you have the additional security of owning the land. Okay, let's move on to our next opportunity. This is a different opportunity again. This is Nature Walk Costa Rica. Now, Nature Walk is a, look, is a fully master planned ecological mountain resort community close to the existing tourist developed area of Haco. You can see a picture of Haco there. This is one of the oldest tourist areas in Costa Rica um, and has uh, been operating as a, as, a, as a tourist resort for decades. Now, as I mentioned, Nature Walk is an ecological mountain resort community and it has valuable teak forestry growing on it. Um, excuse me, my my presentation has jammed on me. Uh, sorry about this, everybody. Let me just get this moving on. My apologies for that. Okay, hopefully we'll get this moving again now. Okay, so as I mentioned, Nature Walk has valuable teak, teak forestry growing on it. Teak is a very expensive tropical hardwood. It's slow growing and it takes 20 years to grow to its harvestable size. It's in very high demand due to world population growth and is in especially high demand in the emerging economies of India and China. But the supply of royal teak is falling. More and more countries are moving away from logging our rainforests and more than 95% of the world's teak supply comes from rainforests. Now, earlier last year, Australia uh, made it a criminal offense to import and trade in all rainforest th timber. Um, and earlier this year, the EU 
did exactly the same thing. They have put in place uh, legislation that's going to make the import and trade in rainforest timber not only illegal but a criminal offence. Now, the EU, of course, has a population of 501 million people. Uh, Australia, by comparison, has a much smaller population. But what's happening here is we're getting reducing supply and increasing demand, and that means that prices are only going one way, and that's up. So, in Nature Walk 1, you get a double return, land investment, investment and a commodity investment. So, as I mentioned, Nature Walk is an ecological resort. But there's a lot more to Nature Walk than we first mentioned. It's an eco-resort community. They have plans for an eco-hotel. They have plans for an equestrian center. They have plans for a mountain spa. There are plans for teak homes at Nature Walk. And, of course, all of these teak, home, teak homes are made with sustainable teak. So, that's Nature Walk 1, Costa Rica. But there's a second aspect to Nature Walk, and that's Nature Walk 2. Now, the entire Nature Walk plan or program is a life in balance. And there you can see just some images of Nature Walk and what the overall plan for Nature Walk is. Nature Walk 1 is 240 acres, and as I mentioned, uh, there are lots in Nature Walk 1 that have both development land and teak growing on them. Nature Walk 2 is 610 acres, so in total there's 850 acres in the Nature Walk development. As we mentioned already, it's an ecological master plan community, 850 acres in total. And it is one of the largest eco plan communities in Central and Southern America, if not the largest. It's a very, very beautiful area, as you can see, and a significant portion of the property will be preserved um, as a natural park, forest reserve, as I mentioned, it's close to the beaches, but sits at the top of its own uh, special valley overlooking the Pacific Ocean. We've mentioned this already. So the, the resort hotel, there are miles of walking, hiking, biking and horse trails, the conferences and educational center, equestrian training, riding and boarding facilities. There's access to the forest, jungles, rivers, national parks, beaches, biofarming and horticultural gardens. And there you can see an over, overview of both Nature Walk 1 and Nature Walk 2. And there are just some of the specific areas within Nature Walk 1 and 2. Now, as I mentioned, in Nature Walk 1, you have a combination investment. Uh, the combination investment is land plus teak growing on the land. Let's talk a bit about the numbers there. We have an entry-level investment starting at just $5,000. This buys you a one-sixth share in a Seaview lot. And that lot will be sold on automatically in either three or eight years. It's a fully managed investment. And projected returns are between 18 and 23 percent per annum, depending on the timeline you choose. The uh, eight-year eight timeline gives you higher returns because you benefit not only from land price increases, but also from the teak harvest. The three-year return gives a lesser return. You get a, a modest benefit from the um, from the teak, uh, but uh, you do get the land appreciation. We have individual lots in Nature Walk starting at $25,000. And the expectation is that the returns from the teak in, in seven years will more than cover the cost of purchase of the land. We have a tremendously attractive launch offer with an entry level of $50,000. In this, in addition to owning those lots with teak on them, with the valuable teak on them, you also receive a 10% dividend from teak tannings elsewhere on the plantation for a period of, of three years. Now, these launch offer lots are in very limited supply. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's a Nature Walk 2. And Nature Walk 2 is our biofarm opportunity. Now, this is again the same as I mentioned with the renewable energy farm. It's a combination of uh, Jatropha and Makauba intercropped on the land. Also in the Nature Walk biofarm, as you'll see here, there's coffee estate lots. There's residential homes and condominiums more equestrian facilities, rec recreational lakes, and there's tilapia farming. And there's some tourist attractions and community farm plots. There's a limited launch offer, and everybody uh, who's on the call today is very uh, fortunate that this was launched last week. So you're one of the first people in the world to hear about this limited launch offer. So what have we got uh, on this first release? Well, we've got 10 lots in total, five one and a quarter acre estate lots, for 55,000 US dollars and five two and a half acre estate lots 
for $99,500. Again, you own the land. You own the Jutrofa. You own the Makauba. These are fully serviced lots with access roads and underground electricity. The Jutrofa and Makauba is intensively farmed and managed with an irrigation system. And it's got a high quality residential um, estate farm atmosphere. Uh, the lots. This is just some detail on the lots themselves. They're fully fenced, um, and uh, they very beautiful uh, with a very beautiful area. Now this is totally managed. All the crops, harvest, and sales of the produce is fully managed on your behalf. Cash returns starting year one and grow through the first five years. Exactly the same as the renewable energy farm opportunity in the southern zone. Low returns initially. Right, the Jatrofa is in full production at year four, and then of course in year five, that valuable Makauba kicks in, and you get double production thereafter. One of the aspects of this uh, Jatrofa farm is that it also sequesters carbon from the atmosphere, and again, we factored nothing in for this ecological advantage, but there are significant financial benefits to be had going forward in both carbon credits and reforestation grants, but we factored nothing into our, into our returns on this. This is the company that manages it. It's the Nature Walk Farming Company. Uh, this, this project is being developed by PRG, which is Private Residence Group. Private Residence Group is a Canadian company. They've been very successful at carrying out developments in Canada, the USA, Turks and Caicos Islands, and now in Costa Rica. And the Nature Walk Farming Company uh, was formed in, in 2009 with the express purpose of managing both the teak plantation and now the biofuel plantation Nature Walk 2. There's uh, some of the management team. Uh, the president of PRG is Tim Alexander, operations manager and, and general farm manager Joshua Fuchs, and farm manager is Alberto Quiros, all with extensive experience in this area. This nature walk intercropping model is Jatropha Makauba Palm, leading to high returns. So, there's also a combination investment opportunity. If you want to diversify even further, you can own a biofuel lot in Nature Walk 2, you can own a teak lot in Nature Walk 1, and you can benefit from the biofuel returns, the teak returns, the capital appreciation of the development land, and, uh, and, and really diversify your investment. What type of returns are we looking at? Okay, well, it's very, very similar to the returns of the renewable energy farm. Uh, these are the gross returns. There is a management fee. The management fee is 15% per annum. And uh, of the returns, that, that's the management fee that you pay, which reduces these returns to just uh, almost identical to the renewable energy farm. So in the first uh, year, your, your yields are, are uh, lower. But by year five, both the Makauba and Jatropha have kicked in, and you're producing a net return to you of slightly over $7,000 per year. Here's a look at uh, the returns if you uh, do a diversified investment in both teak and in biofuel. As you can see, you can combine a biofuel estate lot with a, a, um, a teak farm or a teak lot giving you a very significant uh, return from just the biofuel and teak of from the quarter, one and a quarter acre lot of 8.8% per year uh, or from the two and a half acre of 9.6% per year. Uh, biofuel and resort condos giving you an 11% per, per year return uh, on the smaller lot and 11% or almost 11% return per year on the two and a half acre lot. And remember, you still own the land. The land is in Nature Walk. It's zoned for development. This is valuable development land, and development breeds development. Activity breeds activity. As the condo hotel is being developed, as the other homes go on site in Nature Walk, that land is only getting more valuable. So, this is an overview of Nature Walk. It's a superior investment platform, and it diversifies into two asset classes, or more than two asset classes, if you plan to, to uh, invest in one of our parceled teak um, uh, biofuels and development land opportunities. You've effectively diversified into three asset classes. There are multiple exit strategies here. You've got a commodity investment with cash returns coming in yearly. You've got real estate. You've got equity gains, development 
potential vacation rental use, there are all sorts of exits for these investments. This is, a, this is a, of course, a model uh, that has been developed in Europe as well, and some of the best and most beautiful homes are located on vineyards in both uh, the Simona area of, uh, of the U.S. and, and of course, in uh, France as well. You've got some beautiful developments going on there. Now, one area that uh, is a technical area that I wanted to mention, as I know a lot of you are experienced investors, is a diversification out of U.S. dollars, euros, and also sterling. As you're probably aware, um, the uh, larger economies, uh, the sterling, uh, US dollar, and uh, euro economies have um, been printing more money and creating more national debt. Uh, this is known as quantitative easing. And, um, one of the uh, highlights of investing in emerging um, market currencies has been the weakening of US dollars, uh, sterling and euro against these emerging, uh, emerging market currencies. To put it in perspective, if you had simply owned a Costa Rican property over the past 12 months, uh, the Colone, which is a Costa Rican currency, has strengthened by 22% against the US dollars and by almost 30% against the euro. So even with no increase in property prices and no biofuel or other agricultural commodity return, you'd have made 22% on your US dollars and nearly 30% on your euros just by simply diversifying out of these weakening currencies. Now, the experts tell us that this trend is going to continue in the medium term as these economies struggle to service their increased national debt burdens. So now, an investment in Nature Walk or in the renewable energy form, you really have a fourfold investment. You've got your land, you've got your agriculture commodities, you've got your ecological uh, um, advantages that we have put no um, uh, currency value on, and you've got currency diversification. So, what have we identified today? Well, we know that Costa Rica is a good place to invest. It's safe, it's secure, it's got clear land ownership with a growing demand for land and a reducing supply. We know that the Costa Rican Colonia is performing very strongly against the major currencies, 22% up against the dollar, 30% against the euro in the last 12 months alone. So if you invested in land in Costa Rica and then combined it with biofuels, which is a mandated product in a high demand uh, and low supply, or alternately with 13-year-old teak, which again is in high demand and diminishing supply, or alternately, as in nature walking, package it all together and have land plus teak plus biofuels. Well, we know that these are all good combinations. So just as a quick reminder, the renewable energy farm in the southern zone has an entry point of $35,000. And you will, under conservative projections, expect a return of $50,000 from the biofuels alone over uh, 10 years. The land, as I mentioned, is positioned for uh, rapid capital appreciation, and we're expecting land price to rise to about 154000 over the next 10 years. In Nature Walk, of course, we've got our entry-level offers starting at just uh, sorry, just $5,000. An investment in that entry-level uh, buys a one-sixth share in a sea view lot in Nature Walk, dependent on, on the lots uh, and dependent on your option. It's either sold automatically in three or eight years. The projected return is 18 to 23% per annum, depending on the term you choose. We have the individual lots of Nature Walk starting at 20,000. And again, the teak on harvest should cover the cost of purchase of the lot. We have our launch offer lots of Nature Walk, minimum investment of $50,000. These come with the added benefit of a 10% dividend payable per year for the next three years, and the dividends is financed by teak thinnings from elsewhere in the plantation. There are our biofuel lots in Nature Walk starting at 55,000, and the returns from the biofuel are again expected to return about 50,000 over the next 10 years. Lots of this size, 5,000 square meters in this area, are currently selling for upwards of $150,000. And as I mentioned, these biofuel lots have just launched, well, at the end of last week. So you're one of the first groups of people to hear about this uh, offer. Alternatively, as I mentioned, you can package everything together and invest in teak and land and biofuels in Nature Walk. So, the question is how to proceed from here. 
Okay, well, if you're interested in a biofuel investment, if you're interested in um, an agricultural commodity investment, if you're interested in uh, currency diversification, if you're interested in significant capital appreciation, just send an email to info at kushtarikainvest.ie. Please include your name and your details, uh, preferably some contact details that we can get you on, and we will uh, put one of our sales consultants in contact with you. They'll have a, a chat with you and really get to understand you and what you're looking for, and then they'll be best able to advise you which opportunity or opportunities should be the ones that you look at. Now, I did mention, or I should have mentioned earlier, I don't think I did, that there is a special offer for those of you on the call this evening. If you decide to invest in the renewable energy farm in the southern zone, United Biofuels of America will transfer your land into a Costa Rican SA or limited company. There are both tax and logistical advantages to this, and this would normally cost you somewhere between $500 and $750. Additionally, United Biofuels of America will give you a ticket to the next Jotropha harvest experience of your choice, and those tickets normally cost $1,500. So remember, renewable energy farm, entry level into that is $35,000 and multiples thereof. If in NatureWalk uh, you decide to invest in NatureWalk, the developers of NatureWalk PRG have agreed to reduce the closing costs on that investment from 3.2% to 1.5%. That's a significant saving for you. Uh, the normal uh, closing costs in Costa Rica uh, are 3.2%, and that includes taxes, stamp duty, and notary charges. But as I mentioned, PRG will reduce the closing cost to 1.5%. So, uh, if, you're, if you're seriously interested in any of these investments, I strongly advise you to send an email to info at kushtarikainvest.ie. We'll arrange for the sales consultant local, uh, located closest to you to get in contact with you and have a chat, really get to understand what your needs and aspirations are, and then they can make some suggestions and provide you with the information that you need to really decide is this an opportunity for you. Okay, so now at this point, I think we'll move on to some questions and uh, and uh, see um, what questions have we got in, and uh, hopefully we'll have some in, and we do have about 10 minutes to answer some questions. So let's have a look here and see what we've got. Okay. Okay, uh, the first uh, question that we have is, what is the difference between the renewable energy farm and uh, nature walk biofuel investment? Okay, well, location is the first difference. Uh, the renewable energy farm is located in the southern zone of Costa Rica. This is a less developed area, and it will see strong uh, price appreciation in the medium term. Uh, that price appreciation will be tied into the opening of the new international airport and also uh, the development of additional roads and infrastructure in the area. In addition, there's actually a very interesting project taking place in the southern zone, which is the building of Ladiquas Dam. This is the largest capital expenditure uh, project ever. Uh, well, I should say, sorry, the second largest uh, capital expenditure project ever in Central and Southern America. It's a giant hydroelectric dam. The largest capital expenditure program ever in Central and Southern America was the widening of the Panama Canal. And this is the second largest capital expenditure uh, on an individual project. This is a huge hydroelectric dam, and it will supply electricity not only to Costa Rica, but also to its neighboring countries, Panama and Nicaragua. And that's also taking place in this area. And with that project, of course, improved infrastructure is required. And it may be that that lake in itself becomes a significant tourist attraction. So uh, back to the question at hand, what's the difference between the two opportunities? Well, location for a start, the one in the southern zone is currently located in an area where there's developing infrastructure. And as the infrastructure develops, uh, land prices will appreciate. Uh, Nature Walk is located in an existing tourist area. There's a lot of development already taking place in Nature Walk, and as that development continues, there'll be significant price appreciation for the land in Nature Walk. Uh, of course, the difference between the two as well is the entry point. Nature Walk is more expensive, 55,000 US dollars for 5,000 square meters, or one and a quarter acres. And uh, the southern zone, a uh, renewable energy farm in the southern zone, is $35,000 for the same size. So effectively, you're getting more 
biofuel return for your money in the southern zone, but you're perhaps getting quicker capital appreciation in nature walk. So that's the difference between the, the two uh, biofuel opportunities there. The next question we've got is how much will the teak return? Okay, the teak is 13 years of age and it will be ready for harvest or of a size suitable for harvest at 20 years of age. So it's got seven more years to go. The expectation is that a thousand square meter lot in Nature Walk will produce about $23,000 worth of, uh, of milled teak. Now this is important. Um, PRG, who are the developers of Nature Walk, have a home building arm called Tropical Teak Homes. So they'll be using the teak that's grown in Nature Walk uh, to build homes in nature walk. Now this is important because it means that you will receive milled teak prices and not teak log prices and there's a very significant difference between them. Uh, a teak log uh, in Costa Rica at the moment is currently worth uh, about uh, 300 to 500 dollars per cubic meter. By comparison milled teak in Costa Rica is worth about 1250 uh, US dollars per cubic meter and if you take that same cubic meter of milled teak to the USA, it's worth about 1750 US dollars per uh, cubic meter. So there's very significant added value once the teak has been milled or rough sawn, as it's called. Um, so in answer to that question, uh, back to the question at hand, a thousand square meter lot, which is um, about uh, slightly over a quarter of an acre, uh, will yield about $23,000 worth of teak. So again, uh, the, the teak yield should cover the cost of purchase of the land. And then, of course, you get the added benefit of the uh, increase in value of the land. Now, of course, you can build in Nature Walk as well, should you wish to. Uh, there, uh, as I mentioned, PRG have a home building arm. And lots and lots of our US and Canadian investors do plan to uh, have a home in Nature Walk. What many of them have done is they've invested in two or three or four or more lots and they plan to hold on to some of those lots and sell them off over time, giving, you know, and perhaps keeping one or two lots for themselves and then ultimately building on those one or two lots. Now, for many of our European investors, they're just pure investors. So they are looking to benefit from either the biofuel returns and then the cow and sell the land on and, get, and benefit from the capital appreciation of the land, or alternatively from the teak returns and then sell the land on and benefit from the capital appreciation of the of the land again. So we have a whole range of investors really. Okay. All right, let's see what else we've got here. Okay, uh, the next question that we've got in is, let me just uh, scroll up slightly here. What are the additional costs? Well, that's a very good question. Um, in, uh, we'll, we'll take all of the opportunities separately. Uh, so, the renewable energy farm in the southern zone, uh, there is um, a 3% uh, percent, uh, closing cost. So, that covers um, uh, taxes, uh, charges, notary fees, stamp duty. In addition, there's a 500 US dollar legal fee. In terms of ongoing costs, UBA, United Biofuels of America, take a 10% per annum uh, charge against the, the yield of the biofuels. So, so they are as engaged at making your biofuel returns as high as possible as you are. The more your plantation yields, um, the more uh, they, they receive. So they are as engaged in the process as you are. And those are the, uh, the uh, initial costs. In year two of your investment, there is a homeowners association fee as well in the uh, renewable energy farm in the southern zone. That's $25 a month, which is $300 a year. So not a, not a very large uh, fee. The homeowners association will look after the common areas and security in the renew, new, renewable energy farm. Moving on to Nature Walk, uh, in the teak uh, aspect of Nature Walk, which is Nature Walk 1, uh, there is uh, a, as I mentioned, there's a discount uh, for um, investors who invest through this evening's webinar. Instead of paying a 3.2% closing cost, you'll only pay a 1.5% closing cost. And then thereafter, there's a teak maintenance fee of 100 euros 
per thousand or a hundred dollars I should say per thousand square meters per year so not very not a very high teak maintenance fee but it is vital that you do maintain your teak unmaintained teak does not grow well it doesn't grow strongly it doesn't grow true and you won't ma maximize your value unless it is maintained properly but the maintenance charge is not high in the renewable in the uh, nature walk bio uh, biofuel farm uh, the closing costs, again, you will receive a discounted closing cost of just 1.5% and the uh, management charge is 15% of the yield uh, from the biofuel per annum, 15% per annum. So slightly higher than the renewable energy farm, but uh, that is your only other cost. Okay. Let's see the next are there property taxes in Costa Rica? Yes, there is actually, and uh, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that. There is a property tax in Costa Rica. It's a quarter of a percent of, um, of the value of the property. So in most instances, it's literally running to a couple of hundred dollars per year. Okay, you mentioned a Costa Rican limited company. What, what's that? Okay, when you own land in Costa Rica, you and I have the same land and property ownership rights as a Costa Rican citizen. We, you can own the land in your own name. But there are significant logistical and also potential taxation advantages to owning the land and holding it in a Costa Rican essay. If you want to transfer land title from one person to another, it typically takes about six to eight weeks. If, however, you hold the land in a Costa Rican SA or limited company and you want to sell your land, then effectively all you need to do is sell the shares in your company. And if you sell the shares in your company, that's a process that can take place in a matter of days and effectively the sale can go through much quicker. So that's the first advantage. The second advantage is that a Costa Rican SA can have a, a bank account and there are significant advantages to that. As a non-Costa Rican citizen or non-Costa Rican resident, it's very difficult to open a Costa Rican SA uh, or to open a Costa Rican bank account. But owning a Costa Rican SA allows you to open a Costa Rican bank account. And for many people, they intend to keep their returns um, that are generated in Costa Rica in Costa Rica. This, of course, is, is, is their decision and down to them, but it enables them to, to open that bank account. In addition, there's no capital gains in Costa Rica. And owning a Costa Rican SA ensures that uh, you don't pay any capital gains on your increase in land value and are protected against uh, having to pay any potential income. Tax. So those will be the advantages to holding your land in a Costa Rican SA. Typical charges for setting up a Costa Rican SA are somewhere between about $500 and $750, depending on which uh, lawyer you use. You do need to submit annual returns, but they generally charge maybe $50 to $100 per annum to submit those, um, those returns. Okay, I think we're, uh, we're running out of time. Uh, at this uh, at this stage, so I just wanted to thank uh, Simon uh, for organizing the webinar this evening and thank everybody else for attending. As I mentioned, if you're seriously interested in uh, a biofuel investment, in a teak investment, in agriculture commodities, in development land, in Costa Rica, in currency diversification, then you should look at one of these opportunities. Just simply send an email to info at Costa Rica invest.ie or alternatively call us. Our European number is there. It's 3531-272-4184 or our US number is 1-866-990-1123. So send us an email or give us a call. We'll locate the consultant lo located closest to, to you. We'll arrange a, a chat and they'll really get an understanding of what you're looking for and be able to direct you to the information that you need to make a decision uh, if one of these investment opportunities are for you. So again, uh, thank you very much, Simon, for organizing the webinar uh, this evening and thank you very much, everybody, for attending. Thank you very much, it's fantastic, really informative and uh, very interesting. So uh, details are on the screen there, folks. If you're interested, uh, just follow up with James Direct, info at Costa Rica Invest. Thanks a lot, James. I'll catch you again soon. That's great. Thank you, Simon. Cheers, Direct.